Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti, and man, am I annoyed right now. Uh, as always, nothing works. I don't, I don't understand. You click stop streaming, and then the computer just—I don't know. I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, here we are. I reinstalled everything, and magically now, uh, I don't know. It's it's working for this stream, and then Friday, I'm sure I'll be 20 minutes late again from it not working. So. I don't get it. I do not understand. Uh, in the chat, Flesh FPU's first, Denzel the Terrible is next, McMucus, Robert G, Ram Donko, Flesh F Why are you doing this now? YouTube, come on, man. Jesus. Uh, Eric Mo, Anonymous, Ram Donko, C Mac, Punani, Denzel the Terrible. What's up, everybody? If you want to talk directly to me, all I got to do is type CID FPV. And it'll light up an orange like that. Uh, otherwise, I'll assume that you're talking amongst yourselves. Dandilla Terrible tagged me and said, Gremlins, this is the Gremlins. You fed him after midnight, didn't you? Ram Danko says, uh, is it booked streams are falling? 
Is it booked streams are failing, so start a new one? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Punani says, you, uh, we got faith, you fixed it last time. Rockcrawler says, have you tried turning everything off and back on again? I know it's cliche, but it really, uh, uh, but it really is necessary occasionally. Um, I appreciate you guys wanting to help me out, uh, but the, the it, like, there isn't anything that I haven't tried. Like, th this is a, this is a constant problem, um, that never goes away. It's not just me. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I have tried everything. I've always tried everything. When, when this problem start, when, when it, when it doesn't work, I just start trying everything. Um, so yeah, when it comes to like streaming problems, unless you're a streamer, um, do me a favor and, and just let me go through the half an hour's worth of reinstalling and, and, yeah, turning everything off and on again, checking plugs, checking connectors, checking USB hubs, checking all of the software, uh, doing terminal commands. Um, it's it's just, yeah. If you're a streamer on a Mac, though, uh, I would love it if you had a magical um, wand that could fix this because this like this stream is going to be terrible like this stream is going to be absolutely awful because i'm so fucking angry about this and like i hate that and and like uh, it's uh... <sighs> sorry guys C Max says, well done, Ram Donko with some emojis. Ram Donko also says, no worries, it's YouTube. Um let's uh let's just start building. I I'm uh, I I don't know. I just don't know. I appreciate that you guys waited, but I'm sure lots of people didn't, and I don't blame them. Um, all right, so this is going to be a um, cinematic analog tiny whoop uh, that I'm doing to get props out of you, basically. Um, Uh, so this is the T-Motor AIO that blew up uh, a week or two ago. Um, I don't know why I'm putting that on there. We don't need flux on this board. This board's blown up. I'm going to put flux on the new board. Um, yeah. All right, so let me take this BT 2.0 off this old board, and then we can pretty much just... Tra uh, I'm not going to trash it. I'll save the... Um, I'll pull the... Uh, I'll pull the diff off of this board. It's... Uh, voltage is by the... Well, I'm just going to put it straight onto the other one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hang on to this for a minute, because I can pull the diff off of that and then just drop it onto this, and that'll save us some time. Oh my god. Great. Come on man, don't fight me. Just just fucking cooperate, please.
What is it still stuck to? Like, what is... There's nothing for you to be stuck to. How is this possible? How is the positively... There. <sighs> Alright, so because of the way that um, this fractal board kind of sits, uh, because of how it mounts, you want to put the uh, the lead up on the top of the board. Um, I could technically use the uh, I could technically use the through holes, but there's kind of, if if you're gonna, but yeah, there's kind of no reason to. So you might as well flat solder it to the to the top of the board. Um, this is very obviously like leaded solder on here. Uh, so I'm gonna add some. I'm sorry, this is obviously non leaded solder on here is what I meant to say. So I'm gonna add some leaded solder here and breathe it in real deep and. Hope that I get lead poisoning. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right, so those are on there. Um, Now we're gonna put this guy on. Try to do this on this camera so you guys can actually see what the hell I'm doing. So that it's a little bit more than just me being angry for this live stream. Cold Front and Penguin says, what does RC Expo do? I, I'm not, um, where's RC Expo? RC Expo, what the hell is that? RC Expo. I can't think of what RC Expo is or, or where it is. Am I missing something here? these together here's how you unbridge solder pads clean the tip of your soldering iron put it between both pads heat them up and flick outwards and it'll take a little bit of the solder off the pads and it'll unbridge the pads In the goggles, you can adjust expo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, exposure. That's just brighter and darker. In goggles, they're using expo as short for exposure. Whereas in Betaflight, expo refers to um, putting an exponential curve into the, uh, into the graph or into whatever the hell you're, you're dealing with in... And be a flight. <sighs> Alright, I gotta put the nerd goggles on for this. It's just so goddamn small. Alright, positive is up first. And like I said, I'm just gonna flat solder these to the board. Uh, I'm going to do them at an angle. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it straight back. You guys aren't going to be able to see, but 
it's I'm just soldering a wire on. Nothing, uh, nothing all that exciting here. I'm just trying to get it like exactly in the right spot. All right, it's probably as close as I'm gonna get it. All right, that looks pretty good. And now let's do the ground. God damn it, come on, man. Okay, I can't do this with my bare hands. I got to use a pair of tweezers here. So what's going on is I need to rotate this wire just a little bit. There we go. Now it's where I need it. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. And Okay. All right, that should be fine. Um, give it a little tug, make sure it's strong, and we're good to go. All right, so that's the only soldering that we're going to need to do, uh, which is kind of nice. So, hey, by the way, this is the uh, T-Motor AIO. Uh, Mothy says, do you mess with sin whooping? Um, I do quite a bit, Mothy. That, um, uh, not so much this year, but last year and the year before, um, I was much more of a cinematic FPV pilot than live streamer, um, and I was flying 10 to 20 to 30 uh, Cinewoop batteries a week, pretty much every week on set, um, a lot of music video shoots in downtown Atlanta, um, some more commercial stuff up in uh, Tennessee, and yeah, a whole bunch of stuff, so... If uh, if you're on Joshua's, if you're ever on Joshua's website, he's got a uh, there's a part of his w uh, website dedicated to Cinewoops. Uh, his website being um, fpvknowitall.com, and uh, yeah, the Cinewooping page as well as the Tiny Whooping page um, are pretty much uh, like I pretty much handled all of that. Um, so yeah, like the ultimate Cinewoop on there is my exact uh, Cinewoop build. So if you ever want to check that out, that's available over there. Uh, Mathi says, how do you explain to your client that the drone is noisy or have you had issues with it being too loud? Uh, you know, I've not really had issues, but I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty like, um, it's pretty like gig specific. Like if you want to ask as many questions as possible before the gig and if in, in during that discovery process you find out that like the noise of the cinewoop is going to be a problem then you need to discuss it um so like i got hired by um by a photographer working with uh, bravo tv to uh, to fly a wedding last year and that was one of the first things that I brought up is like, hey, you've have you worked with Cinewoops before? Because these things are extremely loud. We're not going to be able to be up in the air at any point when anybody's trying to like talk or just not not be annoyed. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's kind of a case by case thing. If uh, 
if you're getting uh, if you're getting vibes that uh, that the amount of noise that a Cinewhoop is going to produce is going to be a problem for that gig, you just need to have that discussion with the uh, with the client, and uh, it's their call. You know, like as as long as you warn them ahead of time that Cinewhoops are extremely loud and they sound like vacuum cleaners, um, then yeah you should be getting paid. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if you do all that and then you get there and you put it up in the air and for some reason all of a sudden they're like, nah, it's too loud. It's like, okay, well, give me my money and I'll go. <laughs> you know, because you, you did your part and, and you explained it. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's obviously like absolute worst case scenario. Like nobody wants to to be in that situation that's super awkward and whatnot. So we try our best to avoid that but i mean yeah like realistically uh you just need to let them know oh shit i lied this isn't the only soldering we need to do we need to, to uh, hook up the camera i'm used to the mobula 6 elrs board where it's got a camera plug so um Cold front and penguin. You got to use two T's in T in Ciati. Um, uh, Happy model has those diffs, I believe. Um, or you can just install a fresh version of of Betaflight. But I'm pretty sure that um, <clears throat> Happy model has those diffs uh, on their website. Th admittedly, their website is a little bit of a pain in the ass, so it it might be hard to find them, unfortunately. But they're they're almost certainly there. Um, I don't really know how to help with like where they are per se, but yeah, they're they're there. Um, all right, so we've got camera five volt and ground here. And let me go back to this camera. Oops, that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, Get these pads tinned up. For anybody who's this is like their first or second stream, this is not like usually it's a lot better than this. I apologize. Uh, I'm I'm just There's some shit going on. It's not great. And then to top it all off, I try to do like my job, and uh, Canon's terrible software prevents me from doing that. There's only so much that I can handle. So this is me at my worst. Okay. So. Let me cut. Let me cut these uh, wires just a tiny little bit shorter. Just so I don't run into any shit with them. Uh, wanting to get a little friendly with another pad. All right. All right, now I 
I can't do this. Usually I can get the first one barehanded, but I'm I'm just I'm angry enough that like I'm fucking shaking and shit right now. So I need to do this with tweezers. Damn it. I don't like these new tweezers, I gotta be honest. I like my old ones, but I broke the uh, broke the tips off my old ones, using them to wallow out uh, tiny loop propellers. Alright, there's the signal wire, here comes the 5 volt wire, and now these, uh, so this is the Newbie Drone BI camera, and unfortunately, they use uh, PVC, I think it's PVC, non-silicone uh, insulated wires. And so while you're holding the insulation of the wire, it like comes apart and it's, and it's kind of super frustrating. It's not kind of super frustrating, it is super frustrating. But we'll persevere. All right, we're good. Let me just check to make sure that, so like, the the insulation just kind of disintegrates, and what you want to make sure is that as it's disintegrating, it's not um, putting any, it's not putting any, uh, it's not jumping, basically to another wire, but it looks like we're okay. All right. Oh my God. Um, this camera's all fucking jacked up. What's happening here? Yeah, maybe that's better. What is this side of the desk? It's this side of the desk. Um, okay, so the camera's on there. Uh, I'm not sure what orientation is what on this camera. Oh, there it is. Okay, so these guys are on the bottom. So this camera is going to sit up in front like this. Um, so it looks like we have plenty of cable, so that's nice. Uh, so now we actually are done with soldering. So let me turn this little fan off and put the wood block away. And <sighs> all right. So here's the screw kit that comes with the uh, with the fractal frames. No, so this is a slightly. This is the screw kit that comes with the fractal frames. Uh, shout out to Brandon's Baked Beans for sending me this frame. Much appreciated, dude. Uh, so, yeah, this is the screw kit that comes with it, and it comes with these these fellas here. Um, and it, I, I think it... Um, hang on. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they want you to use these guys, uh, to go through the grommets and into the frame, but, uh, and I think they give you a set of grommets, but I like these, uh, these T-Motor blue grommets. The only problem is the screw is shorter than the grommet. So we got to use a longer screw. Um, this is this is drilled for like these smaller screws, which are like 
M1.4 or something, but I don't have longer M1.4s. So what I've been doing in the past is using M2 screws, but then you have to drill these guys out, which is kind of sketchy. I, I, I wish, I feel like there's gotta be a better way. Um, let me just check something. The, the, the reason that I like these T-motor grommets is that they raise the board up enough that the USB port on the bottom isn't, um, it is clear of the bottom of the carbon fiber. Um, otherwise the battery kind of pushes into it and it's just sort of not great. And yeah, that is still the case. These are like the, these are kind of the perfect, these T-motor grommets are sort of like the perfect height. So to use this hardware that they include, you need to either flip the board upside down, which I don't like that, um, or you need to use a longer screw. Um, and I would love to not have to, uh, drill this drill this one out but I can almost guarantee you that I'm gonna have to because that's just my life but there is one more little screw pack here let me just yeah no it's the same ones it's the same ones uh, so of course we're gonna have to drill it out awesome uh, fuck. Um, all right, so I, I could pretty much just put this screw pack away. And uh, the other one here has the uh, the correct um, the correct length M2 screws in it. All right, let me throw that back over there. So now it's this one. So we're not going to use these, put these away. Um, we are going to use these though. So now this guy, this M2 is like exactly long enough to where just that little bit sticks out. And that's pretty much the exact thickness of the uh, of the carbon fiber frame. But well, yeah, I give up. Uh, but these holes that are here are just not. I mean, I could probably just push really hard on this M2 screw, uh, but then a lot of times it's going to like push the carbon out and it's just sort of not great when you do that. Um, and it'll, it, it, it'll like, it'll kind of split the carbon fiber. It's, it's no good. You don't, you don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to have to go get a set of drill bits here. I'm just kind of taking a quick look. Yeah, this is way too big. Yeah, all right, so hang on. I gotta go get a fucking drill bit set. I'll be right back. Um, actually, no, I don't, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I can, um, I have a set of drill bits in the, in the drawer here, a little tiny set. Uh, uh, 
All right, so this is a little set that I got that's got like 1.05, 1 1.1, 1.15, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. So let's take this 0.99 millimeter drill bit out of the drill that's in it now. And let's just kind of look through a bunch of these and see which ones fit uh, into the frame here. So this is... This is 1.15, and it just goes right through, so that one's too small. Let's try 1.3. Oh, we're getting there. 1.3 fits pretty good. Um, let's go up to 1.5. Okay, so 1.45 won't go through. Uh, let's start with this and, and we'll take a quick look afterwards. Um, it's probably still going to be too small, but I just want to get a feel for it. And it's better to uh, remove too little material than too much. I'm just going to do this under the desk, um, just pretend like I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I mean this is, this is not taking off much material, so we're going to have to step it up from here. But uh, if you're trying to enlarge holes, you want to... Um, this is kind of what you want to do. You want to step it up little by little by little. If you just try to drill it out real big all at once, um, it's a, that's a really good way to get it, to have it not be centered. Um, so try not to do that if you have the patience, uh, which I don't, but here we are. Um, let me do this actually. Let me, let me micrometer the, uh, the width of this M2 screw and that will tell me um, how big I need to go on the uh, on the um, on the drill bit here so alright um all right, well that's set. So I'm just gonna leave that where it's at. I have a hard time reading the micrometer because it's just little tiny hash marks. Um, but I'm gonna leave that. That is now the width of the um, the width of the screw itself. And now I'm gonna take this drill bit and see. All right, so the two millimeter drill bit won't go in. Come on, man. Why is everything fucking with me today? Try 1.8. 1.8 goes. Okay. So 1.8 goes in there and it's got, got a fair bit of room to, to, to spare. So I don't want to drill it out to the exact uh, dimensions of this M2 screw. I want to drill it out a little bit smaller because the, the outer dimensions that I just got with the micrometer are um, the outsides of the threads themselves. I want to try to drill this out to the width of the 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 like the core, like the shank or whatever the hell it's called, that is within the the, the tips of the threads. If that makes any sense at all. Um, and let me just kind of take another look at that. Oh, the micrometer also must have spun on the desk. because it is now not the right size. All right, so it's the right size again. Let me see if I can get it to catch. The inside part. 
basically what I'm trying to do is set the micrometer to be the same size as the as that inner part. And I think that's it. I think where it's at right now is about perfect. So let's flip the little switch here to lock it in. And now let's try the same thing. Let's take this 1.8. All right, so the 1.8 does not fit now. So let's go down to 1.7. Closer, but still not quite there. Let's try 1.6. Wow, still not there. All right, and so it's it's going to be 1.5. 1.5 is going to be the right one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I was at 1.45, let me drill it 1.5, and then um, and then what we'll do is we'll put one of these uh, M2s into it, and we'll see how it does. We'll see how it like reacts, and if it's, if it's jacking up the carbon, then we'll drill the rest out with uh, 1.6. So again, I'm just going to do this under the desk so that the carbon fiber dust falls down to the ground. Technically speaking, if you're messing with carbon like this, filing it or drilling it, um, you got to really make sure you don't breathe it in. So you should try to do this under running water. But I never claimed to be a smart person, so I'll just do it under the desk like an idiot. Uh, Odd says, Odd, Odd calls me a hoe and says, if you use a piece of cardboard under the frame on the table, you can drill vertically. Just be, uh, uh, be sure to have a straight hole. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, good idea. Um, all right, so we got these drilled out. Let me use my 5X loop, and I'm just going to look at the drilled out hole while I hold the M2 screw up to it and just kind of see. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I I think that the I think it's still too small. I think we we should drill it out to 1.6, but um See, I did this last time. I didn't drill it out enough last time and one of the holes got kind of mangled. It 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 kind of doesn't matter because like it's just holding on the flight controller and like especially with this rig, I'm never going to really crash this rig hard. So this is just me being a complete lunatic but I mean you are what you eat actually no this might be perfect let's give it a shot let's just put one of these through and we'll see what's up so these M2 screws are not they're not they don't have like pointy tips or anything so you got to just kind of push really hard to get them to start, um, but it'll happen. And now you just kind of listen, and if you hear too much cracking, that's it delaminating, which is not what you want. And you want to try not to push too hard, because that's another way to get it to delaminate. All right, so yeah, we we do have a little bit of a little bit of delam going on. I'm going to show you guys in a little bit, not in a little bit, in a second, I should say. Um, but we got the screw all the way through here. Um, I'm putting it through a little bit extra just to to really define the, the you know we're threading this carbon fiber right now. Um, so I put it through a little bit extra to really drive those threads into it. And so now it's been through there. Let me show you guys what we got. Uh, so here's a hole that we didn't do that with. Uh, this one right here. This is a hole that we did not 
punch out that's just freshly drilled out. And then here's a hole that we did drill out. So you can see it's kind of lifting the, the carbon fiber up there. And then on the other side, it's kind of doing the same thing. And you see there is a little bit of a crack in the carbon there. I don't love that, um, but again, we're holding a little AIO, so it's probably gonna be okay. Um, it's the it's only cracking the very top. Well, no, it is starting to delaminate these layers. God damn it. Yeah, we gotta drill this out bigger, a little bit bigger. Um, let me show you, let me at least try to show you. Uh, so in here, in there, it's starting to separate the uh, the layers. It's gonna be really tough to show this. There it is. Yeah, you can barely see it. I don't know, I can see it though. So uh, I'm gonna drill one of these holes out a little bit bigger and I'm gonna put a screw through it. So here's the deal. Um, if you're gonna drill these out for M2, it looks like uh, 1.5 is a little bit too small. You wanna drill it out at least 1.6. So let's give that a shot and we'll see if it's a little bit better. Yeah, um, Fractal uh, is dead on the money. A little bit of, uh, little bit of, uh, um, Crazy glue, CA, whatever you want to call it, uh, we'll fix this right up. Um, yeah, Fractal, the, the reason I'm doing this is that the, um, the, the screws that come in the kit, so the, these T-motor uh, rubber grommets, these T-motor rubber grommets are the perfect height uh, to, keep the, uh, to keep the USB port from from peeking out too far down below and having the batteries push into it. Um, but these screws that the kit comes with are a little bit too short. Um, so yeah, I've got to go to M2 screws because I, I don't have any extra of these um, 1.4 screws. Uh, Fractal says, why no flight controller upside down? I, I just don't like it that way. I, I don't like the flight controller upside down. I don't like the, um, the, the ceramic antenna pointing downwards. I don't like all these wires pointing upwards. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's the provision for the USB port. So I just, um, yeah, I just like it better with it, with it right set up here. I don't even know if I could do this upside down because of the ceramic antenna tower. Let's see. Plus then like all the pads, it's, it's less serviceable when it's upside down too, right? Like all of the pads that you need to solder to are on the bottom. Yeah, so that you can't even do it upside down because the, uh, the ceramic ELRS antenna would hit on this part of the frame here. Um, but even if it weren't for that, I would still not mount it upside down. It, it just makes it a, a pain to kind of work on when it's upside down. If it's right side up, your pads are all on the top, your UFL connector is up on top. Um, so yeah, it just you don't have to tear the entire thing apart if you have to uh, if you have to work on it. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna drill out that same hole. I'm gonna drill that same hole out because it's. It's a little bit damaged now. Well, I mean, if, if I ruin just one of the holes, I'm kind of okay with that. Um, like if I drill this out and it's too big, then I can, um, I can just re-drill this, uh, or I can just CA the hell out of this one. And uh, kind of repair it. Whereas if I drill another one out and then it's too big, then I've got two holes that are kind of damaged. Um, all right, cool. So put this back in here. 
Yeah, this is the right size. All right, so it's so 1.6 is the is the correct size, um, I think, for these M2s to to give them enough bite, um, but at the same time, not drill them out so much that uh, you're like past the point of no return. So let me drill one of the one more of these out. So this guy's drilled out 1.6. Let me do the same thing here. And I'm just going to put the M2 screw down and we'll see how this one does. Uh, it, it started much easier. And now it's kind of tightening up. But now it's through. And I did not feel any cracking on this one. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, so it's 1.6. So 1.6... Uh, is the right size to drill these guys out uh, if you want to put an M2 screw through it that's going to thread into it. Although, hold on, there is a little bit of a... Hold on, there's a little bit of anger going on here. Let me take a look at it with magnification. Ah, eh, shit, it still cracked the... Uh, it still cracked the top layer, but it didn't separate any of the other layers... Uh, so, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. Uh, I mean, you might be able to do it. If you didn't want to crack the top layer, I would drill it out 1.7. The problem with drilling it out 1.7 is, is you're just removing more and more material. Um, and, like, my concern is if I have to take this thing apart and put it back together a bunch of times it's going to, like, it, it could potentially open up and strip the holes. So I would rather have um, one layer of, cra the, the top layer of carbon be a little bit cracked and, and just not look perfect uh, and have this thing be able to get taken apart and put back together a little bit more often. So I'm going to drill the rest of these 1.6 and just keep going on this build. All right, cool. So we're good. Um, 1.6 is the one, in my opinion. I'm very tempted to try 1.7, but like if I do 1.7 now, and then down the road it starts to strip the carbon out, I'm going to be pissed. I mean, in that scenario, you can always just... Uh, you can always just nut the bottom, so it's not like the total end of the world, but then you got to run a longer screw through, and it's going to weigh something, and I would rather just avoid that situation entirely by, um, yeah, leaving a little bit more material in here. Uh, oh, Christ. Okay, so uh, this is forward. This is where the camera is gonna mount to. So we're gonna put the board like this, and then we're gonna just blast these M2 screws down through the grommets, into the carbon fiber, threading into the carbon fiber, and our AIO will be mounted and ready to go. So let's get that going here. Come on. All right, cool. So that one's going in. All right. Let's put the opposing one through here. And then after this, we are going to um, get to mess around with the TPU stuff. So I mean, I, I guess I didn't really talk anything about this build. Uh, folks that have, have been attending the streams for the last week will know exactly why I'm doing this, but anybody that hasn't won't. 
Um, so Thursday nights, there's a, uh, a sim racing place, 15 minutes from me, uh, called Torque Motorsports, that um, they let a bunch of uh, dri RC drift car folks use some of their carpet to build racetracks and hang out there and, and drift around Thursday nights and Sunday nights. Um, and so last Thursday, uh, me, Eva FPV, and Patrick all went and had an absolute riot of a time. Uh, and the one thing that was kind of annoying me about the... So the, to, to chase these... It's, it's really difficult to chase these RC drift cars. And so, of course, the ultra lightweight um, analog 65 millimeter tiny whoops were the best. Um, but I, it really annoyed me that there's a whole bunch of prop in view because like, otherwise it's, it's really, I mean, the footage is like really nice. I have a bunch of the footage up from the Insta360 Go 2, which I was flying around the tiny lifter over on my Instagram page. Um, but the analog footage, it just kind of looks silly because like, it's so obvious that it's a, that it's a tiny whoop. Um, and the uh and so yeah the fractal frame is the perfect fix for that because it puts the camera nice and low down in between the front standoffs and uh yeah that'll give it a much more cinematic kind of look uh i am going to also be building an hd zero 65 millimeter rig the same exact build that i had before but i'm going to put it all back together um and then so we'll play around with that a little bit. Uh, if I can figure out how to afford the um, a set of the walk snail goggles, I'm gonna do a uh, walk snail 75 millimeter build uh, because that'll give really nice quality 1080 footage. Um, I put this one a little bit too far through. And then uh, I'm just going to, I'm looking forward tomorrow night to just flying more uh, tiny lifter batteries to see if I can get used to it. Um, yeah, the tiny lifter is really good, but I mean, chasing the little drift cars is really difficult. It's, it's extremely, extremely, extremely difficult. So um, the extra weight and power that the tiny lifter have really make it difficult to uh like what we're trying to do with these rc drift cars is like I'm, I'm trying to change my elevation from like one inch off the carpet to one and a half inches off the carpet and like in order to do that a really lightweight really responsive rig is going to make a huge difference um and the tiny lifter is not that the tiny lifter has a big old 26.2 gram camera on it and it's just, she, she's just a big girl. She's a big girl, that tiny lifter. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, I don't know. It's something. Words that make sense here. Uh, I'm hoping that this newbie drone BI camera looks good. Uh, I am going to try some different cameras though. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, after we finish this, uh, we're going to be putting a Caddx Ant on one of the other little 65 millimeter tiny whoops. And so tomorrow, tomorrow night, I'm going to get footage, analog footage with three different cameras, Newbie Drone BI, Caddx Ant, and Runcam Nano 3 with the old lens. Um, and we'll figure out which one's best. And then whichever one is best is what's going to end up on this. This is basically going to be the analog rig that I use to chase these little drift cars. So when I want to get like really, um, you know, down low analog footage, uh, it's going to be with this. So whichever camera is best is what's going to end up on this guy. Let me just twist these uh, camera cables up a little bit which will also shorten them up a little bit. Okay. 
All right, so yeah, that looks good. That'll just sit right in there. Um, I've been super impressed by the by the newbie drone BI camera on um, on rigs where it's uh, on on non newbie drone AIOs basically, and and the reason that I say that is that the newbie drone AIO. Um, it just makes the video a little bit milky. Uh, Eves, are you still in here from Fractal? What What's the deal with the um, with the, the the adjustable holes? Is it so the the one hole the the rearwardmost hole? So there's there's four slots in the front of this thing. the The fourth slot back is for the um, is for the battery holder. But then there's three front slots. The the farthest forward slot is for the front of the camera holder. So then you get to choose between the other two slots uh, to hold the camera in. And I'm wondering if there's like a philosophy there. Like, should I be using the... I want like zero up tilt on this rig. Um, so is there one hole that I should use over the other? The man said with a straight face. Unbelievably. What's sort of the deal with that? What's up, CMYK? Titan says, at what temp would you say a drone tiny whoop is, is overheating? Um, it's too hot and will break. I mean, it, it depends on a lot, Titan. It, it depends on what motors, what props, what battery... Um, what the flying is like, is, is this, are we talking like racing, are we talking freestyle? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really tough question to ask, to, to answer rather. Um, what I can say though is that when, when motors start to overheat, they, um, like you can feel it, they, they lose a significant amount of power. So that's what I typically kind of feel for, like if I'm wondering if, if a build is, uh, is overheating or getting too hot or whatever, um, is I'll just feel for the motors to kind of change performance, to, to perform differently, worse really. Um, with tiny whoops, for whatever reason, it, typically, even if the motors are getting a little hot, um, if you land it and try to feel the motors, they just don't really feel hot. On, on bigger rigs, like you can touch the motors and, and feel if they're too hot or not. Um, but with tiny whoops, you can't really do that. I, I don't know why. Maybe like the can of the motor. Maybe they're, none of the motors are just ever getting hot. But sometimes they certainly perform like they're getting too hot. So I'm pretty sure that's not the case. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Titan says, what about the AIO? Uh, it's not really a concern with the AIO. AIOs don't really get too hot per se. Um, they just kind of, I don't know, they just live. Um, so I'm going to use the second hole back here, I think. Um, all right, so let's put this TPU through the frontmost hole first. And you just kind of put it through diagonally. Like you get one side through and you just grab it and just kind of work it a little bit at a time. And then you just pull the rest of it through. Easier said than done, but you'll get it. Just be as patient as you possibly can be, which I don't have much patience tonight if I'm honest, but do my best here the, the better way to do this is to thread it through from the other side but I already have it looped over the camera so I'm just kind of being a little bit stubborn here I'm trying to pull it through like this this might not work though I might need to do it the other way OK, 
Okay. Um, I'll try to use this to mash it through. Now, let me do it the intelligent way. So this is how you want to do it. Um, you take the long side of this and you feed it up through here. And then that'll allow you to pull it through. Although this is, uh, this is a little too short here. So, so this is one that already got used. Um, it needs to go up and over like this. Hold on, I gotta make sure I do this right. Um, so this, okay, yeah, so this goes up and over. Uh, is it really already 7.30? Good God. I can't wait to just go to sleep and have this day just go away. Um, yeah, all right. So I have to, I have to clip the little niblets off of this one to get it to feed through there. Um, if this messes this up, I, I do have an extra one, but I think I'll be all right. All right, I clipped the little niblets. And so, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it goes, now it goes through. And so you just hold it in there, grab it. And now you can much more easily kind of pull it through here. All right, so now it's situated. And so we now thread this around the lens of the camera, like a little G-string, like that. Does this camera look like shit? Hold on. Hold on. Wow, this computer is just, I don't understand. Uh, I guess it's normal, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, it goes around the, uh, the lens like this, and then you just kind of drop it down here, and you gotta feed it through the, uh, this little guy but you also have to make sure that it's it's stretched tight enough around the camera. All right, so there it is. All right, so yeah, now it's peeking through at the bottom. We can pull the same kind of deal. Just grab pliers and just pull this little guy through. The question is, should I use the front or the I'm going to I'm going to use the second slot back. I think that's going to give you the lowest possible up tilt. Um, and if it's not right you can just sneak it out of there and uh, and redo it, but I think this will be fine. So, same deal, you just grab the TPU and then just pull it down. Oh shit, that's a lot of up tilt. That's not what I want. I do not want anywhere near that amount of up tilt. Farts. Okay, so we're gonna test that now. I gotta try to pull this thing back through. There we go. Okay, so that's back through. Let me try to use this more rearward hole here. Okay. And. All right, so there we go. That's through the little thing. So now let me just. Uh, man, I don't want. I don't want all this up tilt. Yikes. Uh, let me try to loosen up the TPU on the front of the camera in hopes that that'll let the camera kind of rotate downwards. Fiddly build this is, fiddly build for sure. Um, but it's kind of the only way to get your, uh, to get props out of you, you know, to try to do what I'm doing. Like this is, this is it. 
This is the way. So, yeah, let me just keep trying to scooch this TPU rearwards up and over the, uh, the front part of the camera. Uh, that might have been a mistake. I just stretched that TPU out a little bit too much, I think. I have a funny feeling this camera might be a little bit too loose. I hope not. I hope I didn't just mess this TPU up. I mean, I have extra. It's fine. You gotta, um, there has to be some up tilt because you have to be able to pull this TPU strong enough to hold the camera in place. Um, otherwise the camera will be kind of wobbly. Man, that's a whole bunch of up tilt though. I, I, Now I'm kind of second guessing my choice on, yeah, I, I think I should have used the front hole. I, I think I, um, I did a dumb thing by moving this to the, to the rear hole in the carbon. I, I thought maybe it would let the, uh, the strap fit in there a little bit looser, but that doesn't really make any sense. So let me try to get this, uh, out of here and then I'm going to put it back in the farther forward hole. Okay, I think it's coming out. Go, go, go. Come on, little fella. Get out of there, TPU. There it goes. All right, so there's that. And we're going to put it back in the farther forward spot. And pull it down and through and there we go okay oh that's the stuff there it is okay cool 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 yep 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 all right now we got just a little bit of up tilt maybe like five degrees maybe ten that's where I wanted it and it's it moves a little bit it moves around a little bit but it should be fine it kind of gets sandwiched in between the front ducts Hopefully this camera is not too wide. Um, I didn't think about that, but we'll find out in a minute. Um, the camera is somewhat straight. I, I wish it was a little straighter, if I'm honest, but um, again, the ducts should, uh, should kind of firm that up and keep it a little bit straighter. All of a sudden now it's creeping into more up tilt than I want. What the hell's going on here? Um, let me just keep fiddling with this. Um, what I'm trying to do is pull the TPU. Oh fuck! Pull the TPU. Oh god, I can't keep doing that. I'm gonna I'm gonna break something. Uh, trying to get the TPU down over the off the front of it I want this to be held in place as good as possible so it's not moving around it's like if if you if your camera angle if your up tilt changes or if your camera like rotates a little bit man it makes flying like almost impossible um, that was one of the things that kind of freaked me out most about this frame flying around freestyle um, because that's what that was happening during hard hits. Um, hopefully, as like a more cinematic build, that won't be an issue. But I want to do everything I possibly can to kind of avoid that here. Uh, so this is a plastic spudger. And oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's pulling the the TPU. All right, so we're gonna rock that, and and hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, I'm going to cut this uh, Meteor 65 frame up, the, the ducts. I have a set of, uh, uh, when Brandon sent me this frame, there was a set of uh, um, black cockroach ducts in there. And th those are great for strength. If you're going to do a freestyle fractal build, 
I would definitely use the uh, the cockroach uh, newbies run cockroach frame ducts, but this is not going to get crashed a lot. So I want to use the ducts that are as light as possible. Um, technically, that would mean that I would want to use the happy model uh, frame ducts, but those are like so fragile that I, I don't want to deal with that. So. The Meteor 65 is like the happy medium of lightweight, but very strong. Uh, so that's why I'm going to use this little guy here. So just taking the screws out and so to cut these frames out, you just take your little flush cutters here and just cut the ducts off. There's no real magic to it. Just kind of work your way around and uh, completely mangle the damn thing. Um, you just just take your time because you want to get as close to the uh, you want to get as close to the duct itself as you can. Otherwise, it's just going to look like hell. And you're going to be, I mean, technically speaking, the closer to the duct, the lighter it's going to be. I mean, that's really grasping at straws, though. Because I can't imagine the difference is anything really all that substantial. I think the main thing here when you're doing this is just to be careful enough to not, like, ruin the duct, basically. Um, so we'll cut one off, and then we'll kind of clean it up a little bit. God damn it. All right, well, I ruined this one. Let me show you guys why. I cut the um, the standoffs kind of, God damn it. The standoffs for this, um, kind of link up with another part of the frame here. And I was, I just got carried away. So. Oh, that's super annoying. That's super, 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 super fucking annoying. I had an extra Meteor 65 thing, and I think I shipped it out to somebody. God damn it, Jim. Um, and I don't have another extra Meteor 65 frame, so I guess I'll just use the, uh, the cockroach ducts. It'll be fine. Oh man, that's frustrating. Alright, so I'll just use these and it'll just be a little bit heavier than it needs to be. But. Okay. It's going predictably awful. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, these ducts are kind of mangled. I'm not sure if, uh, well, this one is mangled. Let me do this. I'll cut this frame properly, and then we'll put two of these, we'll put the, the white ducts on the front, because they're going to be a little bit lighter. And then we'll put put the black ducts on the rear. 
So what you want to pay attention to when you're cutting these Meteor 65 ducts off is the um, is this support here. This support with the with the threaded hole for the canopy, um, it's connected in to the strut that goes down to the to the motor. So what you actually want to do is come at it from the bottom and you can just draw a straight line with this um, here let me do it and then I'll show it to you okay and then this support is not tied in anywhere so this one we're good to cut all the way flush all the way flat rather okay and okay yeah that's fine so we can just twist that off all right so yeah the 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 one in question come on man get off of there there it is uh is this one here so it's this guy you want to make sure that this guy here gets cut come on please there it is the one that's right in the middle of the camera there. That one is actually, I don't know. If, if you have to do this, just fucking look at it and you'll, you'll figure it out. It's, uh, I don't need to show you guys. If, if you're doing it, just look at it and, and it'll make sense. Don't rush through it like I did and you'll be completely fine. And I can actually put a little bit of an angle on this to just kind of take some of this material off here. There's no need for, it just needs to be thick here where it meets the, uh, the bottom of the duct. So we're good. Um, and keep in mind, there's two of those per. Oh, and it doesn't, that's interesting. It doesn't always link up. It's not always that one. It's not always the, um, the support that has the, uh, uh, that has the screw mount base. Because over here on this part of the duct, it's this rearmost support. So yeah, just, just be careful just look at it when you're doing it and uh and you'll be totally fine i i was just being i've done this once before and i did it with the cockroach ducts and they're different they they don't have this setup where these standoffs that support the motor base are linked in with the other things uh the meteor frame is is a little bit different so yeah just just pay attention and you'll be fine don't rush through it like a dummy Don't be like me, kids, for more reasons than one. Um, okay, so this one is fine. Safe to cut through this one. Okay. And... Okay, so this is one of the ones that's tied in. Careful, careful. All right, good. Okay. So this is all set here. This guy clipped up here just a little bit just to clean it up. Probably hit this with a Dremel to clean it up even more, but I don't know. I'm not that worried about it. Would be satisfying though to get a set of these ducts that are like perfectly scrubbed down. All right, so here's one of the other ones where it's tied in. Be careful. All right, top part. I should say bottom part, and then that's the top part. All right, so we got two of these things ready. Might as well do the third one now. I 
can't believe how bad I messed that first one up. What an idiot. God. What a donkey. Okay. And now this one's tied in, so let's take a breath. All right, good. Got the little ankle going on it here. Sweet. Um, Chris says half ducked it, bitter root FPV said. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Half and half. All right, so there's the battery bay. It's free. And let's just clean this up a little bit here. Okay. That looks a little nicer. Cool. Oh wait, no, I still got this part. Okay, oh that one was perfect on the first shot. And then this guy. So there we go. Let's put three of these on and one of the cockroach ducts as a as a monument to my failure. What do you say? <laughs> um. Okay. So I'm gonna put the extra clear Meteor 65 duct in the whole box here. Put the other one in the box. Um. All right. So let's get these mat motors mounted up. Uh, these kits come with extra long uh, screws, uh, which you, you need. Like you have to have these extra long screws because they have to go through the carbon and then the motor base and, uh, and then the, uh, uh, the duct and then up into the motor base. So make sure you use them. Uh, so on the back, we're going with the black ducts. Uh, I like to mount them in a way that the ugly parts are facing in. So that means and if you get one of these, you'll you'll see what I mean. Uh, it doesn't make any sense now, but you'll see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna run this in through there. No, oh, wait. Uh, well, yeah, let's do that. We'll run it in through there. And then this guy up here. Okay, here we go. All right, we got one. First one is always the, uh, the most difficult. Make sure you don't... Um, tighten that first one down because you're going to need to move stuff around on the next ones but you'll figure that out the hard way alright right, keeping those loose let me make sure this is what I want to do with the wire actually I don't think it is I think I want to run this wire through well no this really does point it in this direction I could run it out yeah let's run it out out and around it's totally personal preference but um, and it also depends on how long the uh, 
how long your specific motor wires are. These ones are pretty long. I should have shortened these up. But uh, we're good here. Run this out and sideways and then drop it back in here. All right, one motor down, and then you just want to like kind of manage the the motor wires and and just get it sitting out in a way that's kind of out of the way. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, okay, so now this guy, we're gonna run it with the duct like that, and so let's put a screw through. Run up through there and see if I can hold it like that. Yeah, that's good. I don't know. I'm just going to throw this in and then I'll figure out the wiring in a second. Okay. Um, I should put a second screw in. Hold on just to kind of hold the motor in the right spot and then I'll figure out what I'm doing with the cable. And this looks weird with the with the clear front ducts. <laughs> okay, yeah, this wire is going through the wrong spot, so let's just fix that real quick. in here. Oops, that ain't it. That's it. Alright, there we go. Same kind of deal, just get these wires out of the way. What you don't want is for these wires to go up into the propeller or to get hung up on anything down below. Um, that's all you're really doing by kind of managing those wires. Uh, again, sorry for the low energy stream, guys. Today's been a really frustrating day. Um, try my best for Friday to be a much better stream, I promise. Hey, look what uh, look what showed up in the mail. That's the uh, those are the apple colors. Man, it's really hard to see. Um, man, the lighting is just awful. Uh, but yeah, th that's old school apple. Um, old school apple color scheme. Because that's what I grew up with. And now I've got a bunch of uh, holographic CIDF PV stickers with it on it. And so can you. If you want stickers, um, it's... Uh, yeah, there's sticker packs available. Just message me. And we'll work it out. If you like terrible live streams like this one, head on over to CIDFPV.com and support me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, the camera is actually not touching the duct. The, it looks like the Meteor 65 duct is a little smaller than the, uh, than the cockroach duct. That's interesting I didn't uh, I didn't think of that oh it definitely is so I don't love that um, because then I'm, I'm, I'm worried that the camera is gonna like kind of wobble around and rotate around oh that's annoying 
Um, shit. Who, uh, who, who did I sell the, um, who did I sell my, my, my old Fractal 65 frame to? Was that Kevin Sumner? Kevin, are you in here? Were there some extra ducts in there? Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, I bet you it already shipped. There, um, I just, why does it always happen? Why do you always realize that you forgot something an hour after you do an order? Um, God damn it. Uh, I think Newbie Drone has a, uh, a purple frame now. I know that they do because I have one sitting on the shelf. Dummy. Uh, uh, it's, they have, uh, super, what? They have three different versions now. Oh, no, this is brushed. We don't want this. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. Uh, what the hell? Get out of here. Um, farts. Uh, hold on. Maybe I have another... Cockroach 75 frame in here. Or, not 75, regular cockroach frame. Of course I don't. Um, hell. Ooh, I did, I did just find an extra Meteor 65 frame, though. And it's in black. That would have been nice. Uh, farts. Well... Um, maybe, hold on, let me, let me check, I have a little stash over here, let me, let me check this little stash here, if there's a chance that I've got another, I don't think so, whoever I sold the Fractal 65 frame to, I'm pretty sure that I put every single extra Tiny Whoop duck that I had in with that, yeah, there's none in this stash, damn it, um, yeah. That sucks. Um, okay. Well. I mean, I could just run these black ducts. I, I guess I'll run these black ducts in the front. And then I'll run the lighter weight ducts in the back. And then, like, net. It'll be net uh, lighter. It'll be fine. Ugh. Ram Dongo says the Miami CID FPV sticker. Uh, but, you know, I, I am going to get... What what color? I am going to order a... Um, cockroach frame. Hold on. Let me see if I got an email about that. Order shipping already. Of course I did. Yeah, it already shipped. Damn it. Ah, uh, you fool! Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. All right. And what color do you guys think? There's this nice, like, dark, deep blue. There's clear. There's smoke. I don't like that yellow. I don't really like that either. Oh, that's interesting. There's like an opaque white. I think it's got to be purple. Uh, so, if I do another, uh, if I do another newbie drone order, I'll be sure to forget to order this frame in purple. <laughs> oh, that's super annoying. <laughs> Whatever. 
this is the the v2 cockroach frame these uh these ducts are uh these are a little bit heavier chris says half the ducts what's that mean freeloader says uh did you see the sticker i was given today posted in discord general nonsense i did not discord general nonsense oh wait no yes i did i did i did um remember electricity will kill you remember kids electricity will kill you <laughs> it's a great sticker <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. All right. Um, so now I have to take these motors and ducts back off and switch them front to rear. That's stupid. Uh, okay, so this one's good. And then, we'll use that one. Oh, we will use this one. Okay. Wow. Team Loco says, need robot lady. Uh, Metal Ritson says, I'm told the top whoop racers actually shave down the ducks to be even shallower. I know we got time for that. Yeah, they do. Can confirm they do do that. Chris says, it's cutting the ducks in half. Ooh, that's creepy. That's a little too creepy for me. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a little more, uh, a little more durability than that. I think. Interesting idea, though. I could do that with that, uh, with that one duck that I threw away. Okay, and that actually wouldn't really work in the front here. The front, I need the full duct because um, I want it to to brace itself up against the camera. So that would only really work in the rear. But like I said, that's, that's a little more sketchy than than I want to be. Nothing against anybody that does that, though. Okay, so this duct is going to get mounted like this, and let's bring the motor in, like that. Come on, there we go. All right. Okay, motor number four is on with the appropriate ducts to hold the camera straight and the wire is going outside the way that I want it to. Why is there another motor like threaded in? How did you get there? Get out of there. Uh, all right, and put this up and in, and there we go. Okay, one is finished. Just one. Oh, and I actually, I, I do not like the way that that motor wire is routed. It's, it's kind of pinching the uh, the leads a little bit so let's put it up here the this yeah this duct really wants it to be like that but then what I can do is sneak it to the outside here like this that's the stuff okay that's the way to do it all right and then down here, and good to go. All right, finally, we've got one done properly. Yikes. Not yet. <laughs> this lost a bunch of its twistiness. 
Now it's done properly. Okay. One. Finished. Uh, this back one I need to swap out. Bitterroot is also a fan of having the ducts. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't want that. I don't want half the ducts. I want all the ducts. I want the full duct. Just because. Uh, how does this one mount like this? Yep, there it goes. All right, so it goes in like that. And then... Oh, I see. Yeah, right, right, right. I see why I was getting confused with the wire routing. It's because the, uh, the meteor ducts are completely different in the way that the, uh, the motor wires exit. That makes sense. All right, cool. That's on there. Let's start getting these screws going. Okay. All right. The significantly smaller Meteor 65 duct here. I can't believe how much smaller this uh, this Meteor duct is than the than the cockroach duct. That's kind of wild. So this thing's going to be a little bit front heavy, but I mean it's it'll be fine. It's it's mainly just going to be like a chase rig, so it's not, you know, I'm not going to be doing like big, no I'm not going to be ramming the throttle up and down a lot to the point where like you would actually notice something like that, so this will be completely fine, I'm sure. Yeah, this is not going to be a freestyle rig. I, I, I tried to do this, Fractal 65 is a freestyle build and, it, and it's just not my thing. Um, but man, for this use right here, that this I think this is the perfect use for this uh, for this frame. I think this is going to be really fun. All right, so we're going to do the next one up front, and so we are going to do another black cockroach 75, 65 duct, and let's get that on here. Okay. All right, that's looking good. Let's just balance that. And motor. I mean, I. I will say this, I, I've got, le like, from the shit that's been going on today, I've got less patience right now than ever before, and I'm still able to do this. So, it's not that bad. Um, it really isn't. But, it definitely takes significantly longer than, like, a regular build. Um, if you break a duct, though, it's not too bad. It's only three screws to replace um, so that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, the the so the the up tilt keeps changing on this. The the up tilt keeps uh, increasing, which I got to be honest, I'm I'm kind of annoyed by. Uh, it keeps. Well, no, I guess it's it's not a ton of up tilt. It's it's fine. I guess I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just this TPU thing. The front straps need to be stretched out a little bit more. There we go. All right, that's nice. Um Hold on, is, are, are there, are, are these, I feel like I'm using an, an, an odd duct 
is one of these ducks it's the same? I'm not gonna have to take this apart again. Uh, okay, so one screw onto the inside there. So if I mount this like that, so it has it mount, it mounts like that. What? What the hell is going on here? Hold on. Uh, no, 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 it would be mounted like that. Yeah, no, okay, okay, so that's the same. What if I mount, no, nope, if I mount like that, it doesn't matter. Uh, where's the, the other one though? Right, hold on, let's see. There's a little, there's a little raised part that kind of will prevent the camera from going to like mega up tilt. So I'm trying to figure out how to, how to have that be on both sides. And there's, there's no way to do that. It's, yeah, it's just a weird, it's just a weird rotation. Like look at the, look at the, the standoff, see how they're. They're kind of up, down, left, right on this one, but then on this one, they're they're at a diagonal. Um, that just sort of is the way that it is. It's it's fine. It's fine. The only, I'm, the only thing I'm concerned with is that the camera is going to not sit right on the one side versus the other. And you know what? The the camera actually isn't touching these ducts. It's very close to it, but it's not quite touching them. What if I put this one on this? Oh no, yeah, I see. Yeah, right. It has to do with the way that the screw holes are set up. Um, so I could swap this one on. Oh yeah, okay, these ducts are a little bit different. Okay, so they are a little bit different. But yeah, it's because of the it's because of the way that these screw holes sit like like that. So this is whatever. This is fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Oh, wait, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. What if, wait, if this, what? Uh, I want to try to use so like the the when you cut the when you cut the things off you get these little raised ridges here you, see, you can kind of see them, um, and the 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 one raised ridge over here is is pushing into the camera really nicely. Um, I wish I could get another one of those raised ridges on the right side here to brace the right side of the camera, um, but. And I, I think there's a way to do that, but I'm not figuring it out, which is probably just me being dense. So I think it's, I think it's this duct. I think if I put this duct on, it'll do it. Okay, so let me switch out this duct for this one, and I think that'll get me what I'm looking for. Let's see. Okay. So. Let's just pull this duct off. And then I'm going to replace it with this one. And this guy is going to be facing forward. So the motor is going to go through there. Well, no, let's leave the motor out for the time being. Okay, so... Right, we want that. Okay, is that it? Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. There we go, okay, got it. Got it, 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 got it. All right. And... So, this guy goes through there like that. Yep. And then 
He comes on down. Like this. All right, cool. Yeah, the, the ducts are slightly different. Uh, left to right, front to rear. Uh, uh, th so the diagonal ducts are the same. When you cut them off, when you cut ducts off of a frame, um, they're not completely symmetrical. And I had like a, I had like the odd one out. You'll see what I mean if you do this build. It's cause the, cause the battery tray hooks up to the duct like in a specific spot um, and that's that's not different left to right that's not the same left to right man I, I my my I, I got no words tonight my words are all wrong okay there we go so now like if you look at if you look at where the the supports are it's now symmetrical left to right. Whereas a minute ago, the, the one duct had the supports forward, back, left and right. And so now the other thing that happened is these little raised bits are now braced up against the camera. So that's going to uh, keep the camera a little bit more solid here. And it's going to, it's going to keep the camera from going into a ton of up tilt, which is nice. So now I've got like, looks like a relatively consistent 10 degrees of up tilt. And the camera is almost braced left to right. Almost, but not quite. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I like that. I like that a lot better. Admittedly, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little insane. Uh, but by being insane, your builds come out a little bit better. And if you can't fly worth a shit, your build's got to be on lock. So yeah. That's what I try to do. Okay, and now this is this is the correct one here for the rear, so that's awesome. Three more screws, and we can plug some stuff in, do a diff from the other T-motor board, and get this thing up in the air. I mean, I'm, I'm really not going to freestyle this around the house all that much, if at all. Uh, but we'll put it up in the air and put a battery through it to make sure it's ready for uh, RC drift cars tomorrow night. Okay. Just trying to get these screw holes lined up here. Always easier said than done. There we go. Final motor. Thread it through there. Okay. It's funny this this makes it look like dead cat because the front uh cuz the front guards are so much bigger than the rears. It's kind of funny. Uh Freelojo posted a picture of a picture of a cam. Where would you post it Freelojo? On Discord. Uh, if it's on Discord, where is it at in Discord? Oh, I got it. Anybody know what camera this is? I don't. I've never seen that before. That's wild looking. It says full ham on it. Wow, look at that camera. It's It's like oblong. I've never seen that before. That's wild looking. Oh, it's because it's got this big camera plug on it. Weird. I have never seen that before. Not e I've never seen anything like that before. Interesting. Anybody know it? Anybody know what camera that is? Interesting. It's on. Uh, it's in general over on the Discord if you want to pull it up and take a closer look. Uh, he says it's out of a beta FPV 85 millimeter 2S. Uh, you could probably shoot a message over to beta FPV and say, hey, what the hell camera is this? Do you need to replace it? Is that why you're asking? 
Uh, I forgot to put the rear TPU in, which hopefully doesn't bite me in the ass, but let's find out real quick. It should be okay. Yeah, it looks like it's not in the way enough to be a problem. Um, I do think I'm going to have to cut a set of the little knobblies off here, though. But let's let's try it without it. Eves, if you're still in here, is there a trick to getting these uh, TPU things through here? I've not really figured it out all that well yet. Other than, like, using fresh ones every time. When you use fresh ones, they have nice little tails on them. Um, the problem is the tails are a little bit too long. So, like, you set the frame up, you put the TPU through, then you got to cut the little tails off. And now this is an example of one where the, the little tail has been cut off. And it's now too short for me to grab it and, and kind of pull it through. Um, and the TPU is kind of too floppy to force it through. Oh, I might have gotten, nope, I had it, just for like a split second. Uh, parts. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta cut the little knobblies off, I think. Really just says it's it's got really good image quality. Uh, AUD says the camera should be a beta CO2. CO3 has a plug on the other side of the cables, which is soldered to the camera. I've actually heard really good things um, about the uh, the the beta FPV CO2 and CO3 cameras. Um, apparently, they didn't make many of them, and I remember there was. So somebody on Instagram that was like beta FPV please bring this camera back it's uh, it's the best little tiny camera ever there's a lot of little tiny cameras available but like they're all so similar ah all right yeah I gotta cut two of these little jibby jabbies off here and now hopefully that's not going to make this thing too short. Okay. All right, so now we'll be fine no matter what because this is going to go all the way up and through on its own. And then we can just grab it and pull it through. Okay. Uh, the question is going to be, though, I've taken all the adjustability out of it. Um, so the question is going to become, is it now too short? And I'll be able to give you the answer to that in one second. Let me just pull this through the rest of the way here. Come on. There it is. Okay, so that's pulled through the rest of the way. So now this guy goes up and through. And see, this is now where it might, I might have to pull this duct off again to get this out of here because I need to be able to pull up on this. But I think maybe I got it. Yeah, I got it. All right, cool. And that does not look like it's too long. So I think we're all set. I think that's perfect. Beautiful. Okay, TPU is now in it. I think the motors are all cranked down. Let me just spot check a couple. Check one per motor, it should be fine. Let's get these motors plugged in. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's get these guys plugged in. And we can uh, get into beta flight and get it all hooked up. All right, motors are plugged in. Just lay these motor wires flat here. So there it is. That's a Fractal 65 with cockroach ducts up front and then Meteor 65 ducts in the rear. This is kind of as light as this thing is going to get. Um, I could have cut down the leads on this BT 2.0. I, I really should have, uh, but I didn't. 
So, deal with it. Uh, weigh it real quick. See, yeah, if I had uh, if I'd run those motor wires differently, it wouldn't have cleared. Hey, look at that! We're under 20 grams. Wow, the the other one that I built was was well over 20 grams. I thought. Am I missing something? Oh, I'm missing the uh, the antenna. It's gonna go up over 20. I'll use the lightest antenna in all the land. Uh, it doesn't work that well this small antenna, but um, and it's super fragile. But man, is it lightweight. So we're just gonna do. Little small antenna here. Um, I have two of these small antennas. One of them is broken. I don't know which one is which though. Oh man, that sits up above the ducts a little bit. I think I remember this from last time. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be okay. I hope this material is non-conductive because it's touching a little component back there. Eh, probably okay. Yeah, maybe it'll be all right. Oh, there's also no props on it. Yeah, so it's going to be up above. It's already at 20.1. So then once I get some props on it, it'll be uh, 20.5 or so. Do I have tiny whoop propellers? What? Where are they at? Uh, Bueller! Uh, what? Where'd they go? So we're going to go with Gemfan Biblades because they're the greatest propellers in the world. Ugh. I just got to find them. Where, where the hell are they? Uh, oh, here they are. Here's the set. And... Or I could do the Newbie Drone Venoms, but I'm saving the Newbie Drone Venoms for... Um, for the uh, the BLV4 rig. What's going on, Face Gator? Uh, okay. Let's throw these are the um, these are the dyed these are dyed hand dyed gem fan by blades from Jesse over at Tiny Whoop. Uh, they're call he calls the this color mahogany. It's just like kind of brownish. And I'm just kind of straightening out some of the gnarliness on them. Uh, so we are going to go props out. Tiny Whoops really prefer props out, I believe, because um, they don't have much. They just don't have much power for their size, uh, and this this prop is a little bit loose on that shaft, so I'm going to take my skinny tipped tweezers and keep in mind that you will ruin and or break. If, if you have like a nice pair of tweezers, don't use them to do this. Use like your shitty mangled tweezers to do this. And all I'm doing is putting the, the sharp tip of the tweezer in at like a 45 degree angle and just rotating it around. I'm just scoring up the inside of the propeller. So you're going to leave a dent, but then the plastic from that dent on either side of the dent is going to raise up, and that um, and that grabs the uh, the motor shaft really nice. This is such a simple little trick to get a propeller that's too loose to fit pretty much perfectly in here. And now when I put it on, it fits. Not too tight, but like kind of perfect. Um, you can also squirt a little bit of super glue up in there. Actually, you don't want to squirt it in there. You want to put super glue on the tip of like a pin or something, and then you want to rub it around inside there, and then you let it dry, and then that gives it like a texture. The problem with that is every time you put that prop on a motor, it pushes a little bit of that super glue out, and then eventually you'll have pushed it all out and you'll have to do it all over again. This method here, like it, it's, you don't have to wait for it to dry and it's kind of permanent. I mean, eventually you do have to, like I, I, I might be redoing it on these motors right now. Like eventually you might have to redo this, but 
yeah, you don't have to wait for anything to dry. You just jam your tweezers in here, spin them around, and uh, and away you go. So this is, I've tried a lot of different methods of getting um, T-mount propellers and two millimeter motor shaft propellers uh, to, uh, to friction fit and not come off. And this is hands down the best method I've ever found. All right, let's two on, let's keep going. Yeah, definitely not Loctite. Loctite melts plastic. Brandon Woodford uh, has a bunch of clear green Meteor 65 frames and four clear Mobula 6 canopies. Uh, I also got a few different colors of Rit dye. So, uh, do some dyed frames and canopies. Very cool, man. Very, very cool. That's what Jesse's been doing, and the, the results are awesome. Um, yeah. That's great, man. It's super fun. I've done it with skateboard wheels. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. You just put the dye into a pot that you don't love and boil it and then put stuff in there and it just, the boiling water seeps into plastics and uh, out comes something dyed. It's really, it's really slick. And the dye like doesn't go anywhere because like when you heat it up, I guess it, it opens up the the material so then the dye like seeps in and then when it cools down it's it's you know it's like together it, it doesn't like release the the dye or anything like that um the longboard wheels that i did it on i then went and slid those wheels a bunch and it was like like the the blue dye really did seep in there because it, it didn't like become the color that it was previously it's pretty slick brandon woodford's done it with tpu before nice i didn't even think about doing it with tpu that's cool matt Erickson says did you use that RIT dye that is made for synthetics? I have some of that laying around. No, I just use like the grocery store bullshit RIT dye. Um, I literally got it from the grocery store. I didn't realize there was, I never even thought to look for different types of RIT dye. For synthetics, that's interesting. Synthetic fabrics, I guess, because RIT is fabric dye. All right, let's get a proper all up, not all up, but dry weight on it with propellers on. 21, nope, 20.9. So just call it 21 grams. That's not bad. Um, the, uh, I think that's what the other one weighed. Maybe the other one weighed 22 grams. I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, so there it is. That's a... Uh, Fractal 65 cinematic analog build. Let's get it into uh, beta flight real quick here. First thing we're going to do is ESC configurator to get it onto Blue Jay because I don't think it's on. I don't think these T motor AIOs are on Blue Jay out of the box. So let's do that first here. Plugging it into USB, we've got some lights. I'm going to plug a battery in and hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Hey. Uh, I think that was the... Um, I think that was the... Uh, BL Heli tune that just played. So, let's get it hooked up here. No, it is on Blue Jay. I'm just so used to Blue Jay. It's on Blue Jay 96K, though, and I don't want that. So we're going to flash all ESCs, keep it on Blue Jay version 0.19.2, PWM frequency 48, and flash. Um, I don't like 96 because you sacrifice a lot of engine braking. Um, motor braking, I should say. Cars have engines. Electric motors are called motors, not engines. Um, yeah, and the, and the braking is, uh, is really important because it allows you to, it allows the PID loop to make corrections without creating thrust. Um, so yeah, I really prefer, what I really prefer is 24 to 48, um, low high, but at the moment, Blue Jay doesn't allow us to do that. Soon, though, uh, apparently Blue Jay will allow us to do low and high PWM, and then we'll be able to do 
2448, which will be pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to turn on break on stop in case I get it stuck in somebody's hair. I can really quickly stop the propellers, uh, move the beacon delay to two minutes, and then turn the beacon strength up considerably. And right settings. All right. ESC power rating, I'm going to do 1S. I don't really know what that is, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Disconnect. All right, so that's good to go. Let's fire up Betaflight. And now, actually, I'm going to unplug this, and I'm going to plug in the board that blew up, and we're going to pull a diff off of that because I spent all the time to get that thing going properly, and it was Kind of flying all right before it let go, from what I remember. Uh, so we're going to come into the CLI, and we're going to type diff space all. Ram Donko just put a tiny picture up over on the uh, Discord. And then we're going to highlight all of this and just paste it on in. Does this have ELRS stuff? No, it does not. Uh, this is the exact same AIO. Oh, it does have Express LRS stuff. It's got the name, RPM filter. Eh, we'll be fine. Uh, do, 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 diff all version. Eh, I mean, whatever. We can grab it all the way up to here. Copy it. Disconnect. Plug it into the new. New, 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 new. Noonan. Connect. CLI. And paste. And there was already a save in there. Look for red text. No red text. We're good to go. So this AIO is now set up identical to the one that let go. We're going to go nose down, nose up. Roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. Good to go. Check the ports real quick. VTX Smart Audio. Cool. Config 3.2K. It must have a BMI 270. Accelerometer is on. Nothing else is on. Permanent air mode. Permanent OSD. D shot. Beacon is turned on for our ESC beeper. Uh, power and battery. It looks like I changed the, the minimum and warning cell voltages a little bit, so that's pretty cool. Uh, current meter source is on virtual with that little scale that I figured out there because this thing does this uh, T motor AIO does not have a, cur a proper current sensor on it. Kind of silly, but they say that they didn't have room for it. Uh, PIDs are all over the place. 1.1 on the damping, stick response down to 0.4. We can turn that up a little bit. Dynamic damping of one, drift wobble, eye gains turned down, pitch tracking and damping turned up to 1.1, master multiplier 1.4, feed four jitter reduction up at 12, looks good, dynamic, okay, dynamic motor oil is up on 50, I think maybe we were having troubles with this thing desyncing, I guess, that's the only reason I would have done that. Throttle midpoint is set. That's pretty cool. I wonder what motors I had on this rig previously. They might have been these same motors, so this might be a perfect throttle midpoint of 0.42. I've got a pretty aggressive amount of throttle expo in here of a value of 0.4. Um, uh, okay, and then what did we do with... Ooh, the filters are pretty aggressive. Uh, all the way up at 2.0 on the gyro, and then the D-term filter is at 1.4. I'm going to leave that alone. Um... Yeah, dash filter looks good. Receiver, TAER, a little bit of dead band, a little bit of set point cutoff. Actually, move this to auto. Save that. Uh, let's see if it'll let me bind the receiver in here. I have the bind receiver button. Well, first of all, let's see if it'll just bind with the. Uh, uh, with the pa the bind password. I, I don't think it will. I think you still need to do some sort of a... Oh, wow, look, it did! I'll be damned! Wow, okay. So the, the, the CLI dump had everything needed to get it bound as well. Aux 1, Aux 2, Aux 3. Cool! I like that. 
that's a, a really nice part of uh, UART based ELRS right there. That's a, a perfect example of why that's kind of great. Uh, no black box on this board, unfortunately. So our modes are good to go. Motors, 12 motor poles, dynamic idles, already set. We got props out, quad X. Let's check the motor direction. Power this thing up. And I understand the risks. Wizard, start and spin. Motor one is wrong. Motor two is right. Motor three is right. Motor four is wrong. This, and now we're gonna stop motors, close, turn this on, and just check it real quick here. Motor one is correct, two is correct, three is correct, four is correct. Awesome. We do have a little bit of air. I just saw a little tiny bit of air. Although now we're fine. Well, just right at the bottom there, I had a little tiny bit of air. Um, yeah, probably okay though. OSD is good to go. Video transmitter, low power disarm is turned off for some reason. That's weird. We're gonna turn it to on until first arm. And race band eight, pit mode, good to go. Save here. Black box it does not have. And then the CLI, we're good to go. So this thing is all set up. Well, it should be. Let's see if it flies. The, uh, the battery in my transmitter is currently shitting its pants. So let me uh, get it out of here, swap it out. Okay, I'll throw that over by the charger there. And, okay. I like that in the uh, in the newer transmitters, they're putting significantly bigger battery bays for bigger batteries to uh, to power Express LRS and Crossfire insanity. You know, 500 milliwatts, one watt. This is it's kind of the only thing that I don't love about this uh, QX7 is that the battery bay is not a little bit bigger. I mean, uh, that being said. It is still big enough to hold this 4,000 mAh 2S uh, gold line battery, but th I don't think this is actually um, 4,000 mAh because it, it does not seem to last as long as I would think a 4,000 mAh battery lasts. But all that being said, before Crossfire, this battery lasted forever. So maybe it is, and maybe it just Crossfire it takes a ton of juice. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to get a little bit more battery life out of this transmitter. Uh, let's see what's up here. Uh, flat spot towards me. Put this battery in here. And okay. This is kind of, I gotta be honest, this is kind of my least favorite part of the fractal frame is, is the way that the battery just kind of sits in here with these um uh with this tpu it's it's just not um yeah i mean it's it's, it's not the end of the world but i'm very spoiled by the the meteor 65 frame it holds the battery really really nicely okay we are in battery is sitting up a little bit but we're good to go. We've got video and it arms and it flies. Look at that. Let's rip it around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be fairly gentle with this. I mean, let, let's fly it around. Let's, uh, you know, what we'll do we'll fly it really low to the ground. We'll just cruise it around really low to the ground. Cause that's what this is. That's what this rig is for. Um, oh, look at that. No props in view at all. Look at that carpet all close to the camera. So this is on tinywoop.com 0702 30,000 kV motors. And is it just mirrors that look a little blurry. 
feels kind of twitchy too. Why is it? Soon is fine. Whoa, okay. That is a brand new AIO desyncing and falling out of the air. There it is, okay. So this is the second T-Motor AIO to do that. Uh, don't buy T-Motor AIOs. Uh, luckily, I will probably not be. I think this cam. I think this newbie drone bi camera is a little bit front focused. Let's fly really close to something. Yeah, it's it's focused. It's what's called front focus. You can see it in the carpet. See how the carpet right in front of it is is really sharp. Um, it's it's focused too close. Um. It's not focused farther out. Uh, it's okay for a tiny whoop camera to be front focused a little bit because you're going fairly slow. Um, but I don't love it. Wow. I, I, oh, wow. Okay. That is not. Oh, tell me this ES, this AIO didn't just blow up. Now we're good, but. But yeah, that uh, it desyncing on y'all like that, like that's. <laughs> Ugh. Are you kidding me right now? Is this real? Um. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is this is the exact same thing. I. So I, th I blamed myself. You, you guys might remember from the live stream. Um, I had, I, when I initially did the, the T-Motor 1S AIO build, um, I had a problem with the motors where they got like gummed up with, with flux residue. And I, I blamed the, the AIO failing on that. Uh, and I, I just assumed that, you know, that was the deal, but yeah, this one is not that at all. This one is uh, has not had that stress put on it, and it's still falling out of the air. So let's try it one more time here. But I mean, that's that's it, pretty kind of cut and dry. Like you push yaw really hard. These motors and propellers are a known quantity to not to not act like that. Yep, nope. T Motor 1S AIO is no good. Although now all of a sudden it's fine. Let's do y'all and roll with this. Nope. <laughs> And it's on both axes. It's both left and right. So yeah, uh, T motor AIO. The the T motor five amp AIO is is no good. Uh, I'm gonna keep this together because. All right. So look at the look at the. Speaking of front focus and back focus, look at the 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 logo. Look at my logo on the bass drum. Right, it's in focus. Look how incredibly out of focus it gets as we move back, and now it's just a big blur. That is a camera that is focused too close. Um, it might work for the drift cars because if I can stay really close to the drift cars, they'll be perfectly in focus. Uh, but for for everything else, that's not great. That could just be this specific newbie drone BI camera that I have here. Um, these little tiny cameras are notoriously like not in the best of focus right out of the box. Yo, know, the runtime is really bad with this AIO too. What the hell's going on with that? Was that a problem that we had with the last one? Do you guys happen to remember? This is in a this is in a carbon fiber frame, which 
uh, is certainly removing more of the vibrations than any of the plastic frames. So if anything, this should be getting better runtime. Uh, but we are just barely over two minutes really taking it easy. Like that was the first or second time I'd gone full throttle. And we're already down at like 3.4 volts. I think I remember that from from the other build. And I, I think I remember us talking about maybe that was because of the uh, the the carbon fiber standoffs on the uh, fractal frame, kind of blocking the airflow a little bit. Anybody else that's done a Fractal 65 build, have you had that experience of less runtime than normal? Alright, this battery is at 3.35. That's kind of where we need to bring it in. Um, I like to run these batteries. Oh, we got it to 2 minutes and 50, so it's not that bad. The battery is only bouncing back to 3.63, though. I, I, I prefer to run these batteries to the point where they bounce back to 3.8. Um, let's try another one, though. I, uh... So here's what I mean about uh, blocking the thrust. Normally, with a normal frame, uh, as opposed to normally with an abnormal frame, um, the only obstructions to the thrust are like the standoffs, right? Like technically, yes, these motors, these motor wires, but I like to push these motor wires over so that they're kind of on top of the standoff, right? So um, we've got a pretty clear path for that thrust to go. On, on the fractal frame, um, we've got the obstruction from the carbon fiber brace, and then we've got the obstruction from the wires, and then we've also got the same plastic standoff obstruction. So potentially there's, you know, we, I mean, not potentially, like we've definitely added two additional things that are in the airflow on each one of these motors. Um, and yeah, like we know from other rigs that that's not the best. Um, Wade Chunky FPV says, could the PID tune be doing that? Only if the PID tune was overtuned, which in this case it's not. Uh, FPV Trucker says, put it back on 96 kilohertz. I don't like 96. It makes the, um, it makes the, uh, uh, the, the motor braking much less powerful. So the, the rig flies worse. Um, Brandon Woodford says, are you using that version of Blue Jay on any other build? Yep, on all my builds. Uh, and then Way Chucky says, I also turn off my accelerometer because I don't need it, and it frees up processing for the PID loop. The board probably has too much going on. Um, I doubt it. Th this, build, um, this build is identical to all of the other builds that get well over three minutes um, with, uh, with like full throttle mayhem. So yeah, I don't need to. I don't really need to change anything because yeah, this is the same exact. Like I, this is the, everything is a known quantity on this build, other than the AIO and the frame, um, the motors, the propellers, uh, the all up weight. This is a little bit more. Uh, this is a little bit heavier of a build, so that that's not helping things. That's for sure. Uh, could be down to yeah, you know, it's probably just the obstructions and the weight. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, freeing up CPU cycles, that, that's not going to help at all. The, 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 um, the processor does not, um, take a, a significant amount of, um, juice. Uh, the, uh, dumping the PID loop down is not really going to help because we're not overtuned. Like, I can hear, I can hear and see that, um... I could probably turn the pid loop up significantly. Oh, come on now. Yeah. With this T motor AIO, it's not going to be a uh, it's not going to be a freestyle build because I can't roll and yaw without it falling out of the air. Um which is just super disappointing. Like I, <laughs> I was really hoping that if anybody was gonna make a good 
high quality Tiny Whoop AIO that it would be T-Motor, um, but apparently not. I mean, in their defense, this is their first crack at it, so maybe they can, maybe uh, version 2 will be better. But yeah, this is two of these T-Motor AIOs in a row that when you push them hard, they fall out of the air, which is a which is either a FET problem or I don't really know. But it, there, there are plenty of AIOs that don't do that. Um, all of which have a current sensor on them. So, yeah, there's really no reason to do a build with this T-Motor AIO. There's nothing better about this T-Motor AIO. Um, there's only things that are worse about it. So, yeah, I, I do not... I can't think of a single build that would benefit from this T-Motor AIO. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, like, it's really nice that T-Motor sent me this replacement. Kind of like no questions asked. But the replacement is having the same problems that the, uh, that the one that I asked them to replace are having. So it's an inherent problem to the AIO, not, uh, not that build, not those gummed up motors before. But for this particular build, for just flying this thing gently, chasing drift cars, um, this will probably be fine. The motors don't sound like they're, I don't know, I, 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 I don't, I think this AIO is, is no good. Oh, fucking Stevie Wonder battery, really? Uh, man, I can't believe I've done this Fractal 65 build twice now, and both times it's a, it's a wreck, because the AIO, that's, uh, that's a little bit annoying. Just kidding, that's a lot annoying. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, we'll see, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll bring it tomorrow night, we'll see how it is, chasing drift cars, uh, It'll be cool to not have the ducks in view. Man, yeah. So the, the camera is creeping into tons of uh, tons of up tilt again. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've pushed it forward again into low up tilt territory, which is where I want it. Um, but I have a feeling that as I fly it, it's going to creep back up again. Do you see how much more carpet there is in view now? The up tilt is nice and low. Oh my god, it feels so weird now with like no up tilt. Oh my god, hold on. Wow, okay. Let me just adjust for a second here. Oh my god, it's so slow. It's so much slower with the low up tilt. It just makes you fly. If you ever want to slow your flying down, just change your up tilt. Take like 15, 20 degrees of up tilt out, and you will just fly so much slower. Great. Really? I think it's in a cup. Oh, hell. Yep. In a glass. Uh, let me check the hover point again to make sure that the, uh, the throttle expo is, uh, is set properly. Ed K says, are these not the kind of camera that you can tweak the lens focus? Sorry, I'm late. Uh, they are not. Yeah, usually they glue these lenses down. Um, it's super annoying. 2X Whiskey says, Surely you have some low KV motors collecting dust. T-Motor AIO uh, may not be able to keep up with the high KV. Um, I don't think I do. I don't have any lightweight low KV motors. I have some some um, 25,000 KV 0802s, uh, but I don't want to put that extra weight on this. Um, 
I want 702s on here to keep the weight as low as possible. Um, what the fuck? What the hell is going on? There we go. Um, wow, it is so weird to fly it with low up tilt. Holy crap. I want to put this whole battery in. I want to like smack it around a little bit and see where where it like where the up tilt is when it comes back. Oh boy. Oh, there it goes again. Wow, T motor. Ugh, are you kidding me? Oh boy, I didn't. I don't know how to get out of here. I'm blocked in by propellers. Oh yeah. Man, this camera is super out of focus. Can you guys see how bad the focus is on this camera? Oh, come on now. I was really looking forward to uh, the the last time I had a I put a bi uh, camera into a build with a uh, with a non newbie drone AIO. I was really impressed by how good it looked, uh, but this one looks terrible. Tomorrow will be the ultimate test of that because uh, we're going to be able to compare it to two other cam two other cameras head to head in the same lighting, same everything. But yeah, I'm pretty disappointed by this. Let's put another camera up in the air just for a uh, just for a comparison point. So we got over three minutes. Okay, so it's not too bad. But I mean, the thing is, I'm like really limping it around. Like I'm, I'm really just like super low throttle cruising around the room. The, the other rigs in that scenario are gonna fly for like an hour. Can't adjust the focus now. Um, and I forgot to look at my, uh, my hover throttle point, which is kind of annoying. So here's, the, here's a uh, Mobula 6 with uh, 702 32,000 kV motors. Uh, this is the old, oh yeah, see, look how much better that, I mean, that's night and day. So like, if I just limp this, th like if I just slowly fly this thing around the room, and I mean like, I've already blasted full throttle a couple times. <sighs> Like, I'm flying it faster, because it's got a higher up tilt. Let me try to slow down. Try to fly around the room backwards. Ah, it was the coffee table. Let's see if I can go under the coffee table backwards. Yep. Sure can. Oh my god, I went in between the thingy and the couch. That was fun. No, no, no. Hold on. Try to get it again. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Not so much. There we go. Nope, nope, nope. Easy. There we go. That should be about it. And then here. I did it again. Jeez. All right. Let's see if I can get a whole lap. Ah! Getting under the coffee table backwards is tough. Very low. Oh, shit! I went sideways back through it. That was pretty wild. And I'm just trying to stay low throttle. I'm just trying to put the whole battery in low throttle and see... See what the runtime ends up at. With a, uh... With our favorite... 
AIO. So actually, and, and let me let me dial in my throttle point for the drift cars. So the drift cars go fairly slow. So my hover throttle is going to be significantly lower. It's looking like 33, 34 are roughly where it is for the slow style flying. Yeah, 32, 34. So let's set that real quick. Profile, rate, and then the amount of expo is 40, but then the midpoint is 45, because usually I fly this a little bit faster. So let's bring it down to 35. And this is going to give me a whole bunch more throttle resolution at around 35% throttle. And now I should redo that tomorrow with the drift cars. It, and it also changes the throttle point. See, now all of a sudden the uh, my cruising throttle point at the same speed is up at 40. So like whenever you adjust that uh, throttle expo midpoint, you need to go back, like, especially if you make a big adjustment like I just did, you need to go back and readjust it. So let's go to 38 and that'll probably uh, be about right. You just keep adjusting it until when you fly around at the speed that you want to fly around, you're at that right hover point. So yeah, see, so now I'm cruising around at 40, 39, 37, 39, 40, smacking into stuff. Forty-two. So we're up over three minutes already, and the battery is still at like three point four six. Come on, really? Forty-two, forty-one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it up another notch or two. this battery a little bit profile ray let's turn it up another couple notches I went way too aggressive on it uh, let's leave it at 40 that's probably the best I think it was all the way up at 45 though um, so yeah uh, Chris says check idle percentage for arm drop yeah I was turning the um, turning the uh, that idle percentage up on the t-motor AIO uh, I don't want to have to turn it up too high, though. I don't like how rigs perform with that uh, throttle percentage turned up really high. I mean, the long and short of it is that this AIO has problems, like like having to having to do shit, and and there's just there's just no reason. Like we have AIOs that have current sensors built in, um, and and don't have these problems. So it's like, why should I have, you know, it, it's silly to put, yeah, this is just silly. Let's put this all the way up to 100. This being the dynamic idle value. Northern Tier says, what other flight controller would work in that frame besides T-Motor? Is there any? Any, like any and all um, AIOs will work in this frame. Um, at this point, if you buy anything other than the Happy Model ELRS F5 uh, AIO, you're wasting your money. Um, it is better than every single other AIO in pretty much every single way, and it's it's way more durable. Um, so yeah, if if you buy anything other than the than the Happy Model 5 amp, um, you're just you're just I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, one more battery. We're gonna put it through the uh, the fractal build. Wow, it's dark too. This camera is really dark. All right, so let's see if having the highest possible. Um, oh, this battery's dead. What the hell? It was on the fucking charger. Uh, is this another battery that just shit the bed on me? I've had a bunch of batteries shit the bed on me lately. Uh, let's check it on. Oh, check her here. And yeah, it's another dead battery. Damn, 4.13. 
It's just the internal resistance is so high that I can't take it. Um, this battery did not have enough juice to, uh, to let the damn thing fall out of the air. So I'm going to charge up uh, another battery here and I'll test it on my side. There, there is a chance that the, um, that raising that, uh, digital idle up is going to have helped with this issue. Um, I, I, like I said, though, I, I don't like the way that rigs fly with the, with the idle set up that high. And, um, this battery is at 3.8 and it was not a nightmare. So let's really quickly see if, um, see if there's any help. It, this isn't really a fair test though, because this battery is not going to be able to deliver the amount of power that it, it's, it's potentially going to take to overload this AIO and make it fall out of the sky. But on the other hand, if it does fall out of the sky, then yeah, I mean that, that adjustment didn't really help any, but I don't think this battery is going to have the juice to really do it. Let's see though. That was me. It's all the way down at 3.5 already. That was me. The mixing of, yeah, the battery's all the way down at 3.3 now. Not enough juice in this battery to for us to really be able to see. Rig flies different. I, I don't. I don't. I. I don't know what it is. I remember this from last time. Like it just there. It, it definitely flies different. Um, I'm not gonna say worse. I'm I, like in my head. It 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 flies worse, but that's not necessarily fair because it might be it might connect with somebody's brain better better than mine and and I've I've been flying the regular build uh, the regular builds a lot so I'm I'm very used to the regular builds um so yeah it wouldn't be really fair to say worse but what I guess what I can say is that I don't at the moment I don't like the way that this build flies uh as much as some of the other ones uh but again, that's uh, I've flown the other rigs an awful lot, so I would need to put many more batteries through this to uh, to really um, be able to make that call. But it definitely flies different. Definitely flies different. Um, Chris says it's crisp. Uh, I, I would I would actually kind of say the opposite. It, it feels significantly heavier and less sort of crisp than what I'm used to. Um, but I love that there's no props in view. I absolutely love that for for this particular thing that I'm doing. That might be cool. So we'll see. Um, uh, really quick, let's swap the, uh, let's swap the camera in this because I did, I think I did put it in the, uh, in the, uh, the title of the stream. Uh, so this is the Mobula 7 ELRS with, uh, Hex EX0802, the lightweight 0802 motors. And, uh, they are 30,000 KV. And. We are going to swap this camera out. This has the same exact Runcam Nano 3 that my uh, 32,000 KV rig has. And uh, yeah, I want to I want to try a bunch of different cameras at the uh, uh, chasing these drift cars around to see which camera looks best because the the analog rigs definitely do a better jo a better job chasing them around so i want to try to help them out and i want to try to do like a proper edit with the footage from these and so yeah this is kind of the only way that i can make the uh that footage look any better so we gonna experiment so let's get this guy out oh shit this is not going to fit under this canopy, is it? Nope, not even close. Uh, can I run it out the side, I wonder? Nah, not quite. Uh, what about this side? 
Let it sit out the front, maybe? Oh, no, this canopy isn't even going to... Isn't even going to... Yeah, it's not even going to bolt down. Okay. So, well, I can put this antenna onto the other rig. That's kind of exciting. Not really, but... Uh, let's just run a whip antenna, I guess. And I'll be flying, like, right in front of myself, so it, it really won't matter that this antenna kind of sucks. So this is a Caddx Ant um, that has way too much wire on it, but that's okay. <laughs> this is just for... Uh, we don't really care how this rig flies. We just want to compare the visuals. All right. So that's plugged in and good to go. Um, let's get this little whip antenna plugged in here. And I'll just let it hang out in the back. I won't go nuts routing it. I mean, I guess I could cram it up through there, but we could cram it up our cram hole, crammy. I'll just put it like that, it'll be fine. Um, Maybe? Man, I gotta do something with this extra wire. It's trying to get up in the motor. Uh, if I put it up like that, is that gonna. Yeah, that'll be fine. Alright. Maybe I can twist it up here. Yeah, there we go. Twist it up. Twisting up wires is always the solution. <laughs> uh, this is a, an obnoxiously heavy camera and canopy setup because of the screws because of all the things you can get these caddx ants without the screw mount holes uh, and they're much lighter that way that's what i would really recommend um yeah okay this will be fine like this uh my question is are these the right screws for it will these screws catch the uh catch the canopy i think they are but let's see well, that just pop right. Ah, shit! That's just that just pops right off. Well, what the hell screws am I supposed to use? What is this? There's these huge holes in the canopy. Um. What? I mean, these these are gonna be not long enough, or are they? I mean, just barely. Man, there's not going to be much thread engagement there, though. Okay, I do not like this canopy. I don't know what canopy this is, but I know I don't like it. Ah, actually, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's okay. That'll be fine. Um, Put these guys up here. And grab another couple of these big fat headed screws here for this guy. Um, these are different. How do I really not have four of the same? That's super annoying. All right. Yeah, this will be fine. This will be fine for one night. Oh, wait a second. There's another one. Thank God. We've got four. We've got four of the same. Uh, these guys are a little bit longer, which is the real reason that I'm kind of being insane about this right now. Oh, yeah. This will be fine for tomorrow night. Cool. So we'll get to test uh, three different cameras. Uh... The newbie drone BI camera, I, I'm very not impressed with. Uh, but I think it's just this specific one that I've got being a little bit front focused, which is kind of silly. Um, but of course, this just happens to be the one that I uh, I soldered the um, I soldered directly to the to the board on the the T motor AIO. Um, man, I am really, really, uh, sad about the T-Motor AIO being 
just a kind of a mess. That's uh, that's a super 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 shame. Although I guess it doesn't really matter because it doesn't fit in any frames anyway. You know, like I'm putting it into the fractal frame because that's the only frame that it fits into. Um, yeah. So it, it really doesn't matter because nobody's going to buy it anyway. Um, there's really, like if you're doing a fractal build, there's not even a reason to buy it because if you decide to change it out of the fractal frame, you're screwed because it doesn't fit in any other frames. So it's it's just sort of a pointless AIO, to be really honest. I, I don't... It just... Yeah, there's just no... <laughs> there's, there's like, no use case for it. Uh, let's check the... Uh, let's check the camera on this little guy. See if it's... See if it's working. Let me hook a... Uh, one of these dead batteries up to it. Let me pick one that's not... Super dead, though. Wow, that's... That's a lot of saturation. Uh, and a bunch of duct in view. So let me give a little bump to the up tilt. Get a little bit of that duct out of view. Okay. That well, looks pretty good. A little bit more up tilt. Okay, that's looking good. Cool. Uh, here's a here's your comparison. This is the Cadex Ant pointed at the toolbox. Okay. And now the Movie Drone Bi. Same spot. Wow, it is way wider. Holy hell. That's insane how much wider that is. Jeez. And it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad because everything right now is close. But if you look, like, look at the, uh, yeah, I mean, look at the stuff against the far wall. Look how fuzzy everything is on that far wall, right? We got the sim rig, the little red uh, picture frame up above it, uh, the nine cube, white cubey thing to the left of the sim rig, right? And now we go over to the Caddx Ant, and that stuff will be probably much more visible. Nah, it's still pretty soft. Man, this is a lot more zoomed in, though. Huge difference in, uh, in field of view. I don't know. We'll see. And then uh, here's the Runcam Nano 3 with the old lens, which is kind of my favorite. Sort of somewhere in between, I think. Still kind, of, still pretty wide. Man, that Caddx Ant is really, really zoomed in. Um, I'm surprised at how zoomed in that is. I'm gonna give this a little bit more up tilt here too, because there's an awful lot of duct in view. It's just annoying. There we go. So there's a quick little camera comparison for you. Sorry, this was like the uh, worst live stream I've ever done. I, I, I just, I um. Oh, uh, I didn't put swapping that camera into the thing. I put starting the HD Zero Mobula Six. Well, I'll just change the name of the stream. Um, Mob Six camera swap. Uh, no, let's do uh, Cadex Ant versus. NBD B uh, no, because I'm gonna be put, I'm gonna do that in the next one. Uh, yeah, building a cinematic analog, 65 millimeter tiny whoop, um, fractal 65 frame. Yeah, leave it like that. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I, sorry, this stream sucked. Uh, but I, I just, uh, I'm just bad at dealing with life. So, uh, I'll see you guys on Friday. I'll, I'll probably be in a better mood because it'll not be today. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
hopefully any of the programs that I need to work before Friday's stream work. Um, otherwise, I'll be just this angry. No, I won't be this angry um, because I won't have sat on hold for over two hours for somebody to tell me that their credit card bullshit is down for a ticket that is um, that they're not allowed to give me because it was given by a camera and you're not allowed to give in the United States you're not allowed to give cameras you're not allowed to give traffic tickets unless there is a person there to give it i.e. a cop but you know why not just do things that are illegal and take tons of money from people and then down the road eventually you'll get sued and I don't know I don't care be good friends Sorry for the shitty stream. Here's a little bit of flying from stadium. Be good.